Hi, it's Janet. I'm bringing you the Master Key System by Charles Hanel. I'll start by reading the forward. I'll need to break the forward down into two videos, uh, seven minutes apart. Apart, it's just too long. It's totally worth it. And I did. I tried it once, rushing, and it doesn't make any sense. So the the forward deserves to be listened to. It was written a hundred years ago, and Hot damn, if we had known this stuff now, or then, the way we do now, if it had been in the hands of all the people instead of just some of the people, the world would have been such a different place. The thing is, for some reason, it's it's being given to us now. and It's my, my duty to, to help uh, bring the information to, to the masses. So listen and learn. The Master Key System, Charles Hanel, forward. Some men seem to attract success, power, wealth, attainment with, the very li with very little conscious effort. Others conquer with great difficulty. Still others fail altogether to reach their, ambition, their ambitions, desires, and ideals. Why is this so? Why should some men realize their ambitions easily and others with difficulty and still others not at all? The cause cannot be physical, else the most perfect men physically would be the most successful. The difference, therefore, must be mental, must be in the mind. Hence, mind must be the creative force, must constitute the sole difference between men. It is mind, therefore, which overcomes environment and every other obstacle in the path of men. When the creative power of thought is fully understood, its effect will be seen to be marvelous. But such results cannot be secured without proper application, diligence, and concentration. The student will find that the laws governing the mental and spiritual world are as fixed and infallible as in the, in the material world. To secure the desired results, then, it is necessary to know the law and to comply with it. Proper compliance with the law will be found to produce the desired result with invariable exactitude. The student who learns the power that power comes from within, that he is weak only because he is dependent on help from outside, and who unhesitatingly throws himself on his thought, instantly writes himself, stands erect, assumes a dominant attitude, and works miracles. It is evident, therefore, that he who fails to fully investigate and take advantage of the wonderful progress which is being made in the last and greatest science will soon be as far behind as the man who would refuse to acknowledge and to accept the benefits which have accrued to mankind because of, the, of an understanding of the laws of electricity. Of course, mind creates negative conditions just as readily as favorable conditions, and when we consciously or unconsciously visualize every kind of lack, limitation, and discord, we create these conditions. This is what many are unconsciously doing all the time. This law, as well as every other law, is no respecter of persons, but is in constant operation and is relentlessly bringing to each individual exactly what he has created. In other words, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Abundance, therefore, depends upon a recognition of the laws of abundance and the fact that mind is not only the creator, but the only creator of all there is. Certainly nothing can be created before we know that it can be, cre can be created and then make the proper effort. There's no more electricity in the world today than there was 50 years ago, but until someone recognized the law by which it could be made of service, we received no benefit. Now that the law is understood, Practically the whole world is lit up by it. So with the law of abundance, it is only those who recognize the law and place themselves in harmony with it who share in its benefits. <laughs>